This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Now, Blender hasn't been a game engine for quite some time now, but I think every 3D software, including Blender, has a lot of working parts of a game engine, I think. And now with EV Next and all these ray tracing and global illumination features, I think it couldn't be closer to being a game engine again. So I thought I would put it to the test. So with a little bit of rigging and a little bit of Python scripting and a little bit of environment design and a little bit of post-processing and compositing, I think I was able to make a pretty cool free roam stylistic kind of car driving game, which you can control with your keyboard, by the way. So let me show you how I did it. Step one was to make the car. And as a lot of you already know, I love modeling and I love making assets myself. I'm really good at it too. And I hate using other people's assets. Because what's the point then if you didn't make everything yourself from scratch? Can you even call yourself a true artist if you do that? If you use other people's hard work and other people's work to elevate your own? I don't think so. So yeah, step one would be to make your own car. Once you do that, we move on to step two, which is rigging the car. Now, there are many ways you can rig a car in Blender with add-ons and extensions and whatnot, but I wanted to use the rigid body system within Blender and not rely on any other external add-on. And that's when I found this video by AKA Studios, who by the way is the creator behind the RBC add-on, one of my favorite add-ons. So much so that I made a whole short film out of it. And he was nice enough to break down his whole rigging process that the add-on uses to create a real world rigid body physics for a car. And I don't want to steal his whole video and show you how to do it here bit by bit in this video. But what I can do is entice you enough to definitely go check that video out because rigid bodies are so freaking cool. And rigid body with constraints make them so much cooler. Let me show you what I mean. So I have this car here with the body and the four tires separated. Now if you click on the tire first and then on the body, press F3, you see the search menu pop up. In that you search for connect rigid bodies and you apply that to the two things. And then you'll see this little box appear on the bottom left where you gotta change the type from fixed to generic spring. And then you come to the rigid body constraints menu and limit the rotation of the tire so it just rotates on the X axis. Cause the tire only has to rotate on one axis, right? And then we also limit its linear movement along the Z axis only cause that's how the suspension of a car is supposed to work and then you also give it a little springiness here on the z-axis because that's how a car tire will behave when going through like different kind of terrains and yeah you're done you do that for all the four tires and watch how it creates a nearly perfect rigid body system for your car with all the jiggles and wiggles of a real car isn't that crazy look how cool and realistic it looks and that's not it you add a motor constraint to the back tires and you can actually accelerate the car forward without the need of any inclination and the motor constraint can also be used to create a steering system on the front wheels so now you've got a full on working moving car system through these constraints and then you can actually make custom properties from these fields and control them through drivers here in the end panel and literally have like an rc car in your scene in no time and i know this might all seem way too complicated right now here in this video but watch that video by aka studios and all of this will make sense in just 20 minutes so save that video from the link in the description below but yeah once you have the rig set up properly you should have two fields for your car one that controls the speed of it and one that controls the steering of it and now we can move on to step three which is to make the car drivable through our keyboard <laughs> isn't it funny step one was me stealing a model someone else made. Step two was me stealing a YouTube tutorial someone else made. And even in step three, I'm not really doing anything because I can't make Python scripts. But you know who can do it for free with unlimited revisions? ChatGPT. And oh my God, did it make a perfectly functioning script? It was scary as hell how well it did it. But before we move on, now I think would be the perfect time to talk about our sponsor Skillshare. Because all of this scripting and Python stuff would have been a complete haze for me if I didn't have access to hundreds of these Python for beginners classes on Skillshare. Even ChatGPT classes to understand that AI tool way more in depth than I usually could on the internet. If you are a creative person and a curious person, first of all, who loves to learn new things, be it a technical skill like Python coding or be something completely creative like illustrating and graphic designing, you know Skillshare has got you covered because it is the best in market one-stop shop for any skill you've ever wanted to learn through well-curated, well-structured structured classes by industry specialists and experts from all kinds of different fields. You don't even have to limit yourself just to Blender and 3D stuff. I myself, I'm currently taking the building and RC playing class right now, just cause who wouldn't want to learn that, right? But at the same time, I'm also taking classes for color grading and storytelling and editing and animation to hone in on my secondary filmmaking skills that I want to get good at. Or just watching classes made by my favorite creators like MKBHD so I could peek into their workflow and learn their whole creation process. And no kidding, I've actually gifted Skillshare subscriptions to a few of my 
have friends on their birthdays who I know would appreciate a platform like this that promotes curiosity and growth and learning like the way Skillshare does. So check them out through the first link in the description for free. The first 500 people to use that link will get one month free trial of Skillshare right away. So hurry up and grab that offer before it runs out. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. For now, let's get back to step three, which was making a script so I can move that card with the WASD buttons on my keyboard. But you know, I quickly find out you can't control this steering property and the speed property directly with the keyboard through a script. So what I had to do was create an empty object that acts as a driver for these feet access a driver for, that's funny anyway so you have to create an empty object that acts as a driver for these two fields so when you move that empty object on the y axis the speed value increases when you move the object on the x axis it controls the steering field and a python script i learned can handle this kind of movement much more easily so the script allows me to press w to move that empty object forward on the y axis and if i press a or d it moves that empty object on the x axis and since the empty object is a driver for these fields there are to the car and the rigid body constraints, you can control the whole car with your keyboard now, which is just crazy. I kid you not, I didn't do anything. I just gave ChatGPT the prompts of what I needed the script to do and it just did it. And you know what, I'm not gonna bore you with how the script works bit by bit and how I was able to put it all together. But while trying to make the script, I learned so many things about how a car game and its controls might work, which is far more interesting than going through the whole script. Like, let me explain. As I said, pressing W moves the empty object forward on the Y axis and does in turn moves the car forward as well. But what if I wanna stop the car? To stop a car in a game, you press S and that acts as a brake, right? But here in this initial stage of the script, all it did was when I pressed S, it would just bring the object slowly backwards on the y-axis which obviously didn't break the car it just slowed it down bit by bit until it came back to zero and then it started going backwards on the y-axis thus making the car go in reverse which is not how it's supposed to work at all so even such a simple mechanic like this had to be coded in which in this case was when i press s the empty object should immediately come back to zero and thus the speed becomes zero and thus the car stops or breaks but then how do you reverse it? For that, I had to check if the user keeps the S button pressed for over 1.25 seconds. Only then we have to start moving the object in the negative Y direction slowly, thus reversing the car. Isn't that crazy how tedious just moving the car forward and backwards alone is in a script like this? And the same thing with steering as well. You have to put the logic in that when A is pressed or D is pressed, the car should steer left or right. And as soon as the player leaves the button, the tire should come back to the center. Otherwise, the car will just keep turning forever at that same point. Or something like spacebar, which in a game is usually the handbrake for a car, even that behavior has to be coded in. We don't realize that while playing a game and we complain about the shitty mechanics of a game. But this whole exercise, this whole project made me realize how much more effort it must take to make like a whole ass AAA game in real life. So yeah, I was thankful I had access to an AI tool like ChatGPT here. And you know what, I'll post the whole chat log from start to end in the description below if you want to check out how this whole thing was made from scratch. But now we move on to step four which was art directing the game. And this was the first time I started playing around with Eevee next. And let me tell you, it is beautiful right out of the box. It's like a little brother to the cycles render engine. All you have to do is enable ray tracing here and you're done. Realistic shadows, realistic lighting, all that juicy photorealistic global illumination stuff right in front of you. That too in real time, which is just crazy. But if I'm being honest, yes, it works great right out of the box. But all these fields and all these sliders you see here barely do anything like visually, at least in my experience. I mean, yes, the shadows get a little better with more samples and more resolution. And yeah, the global illumination stuff improves the overall reflection and deflections of light. But even at the lowest settings, lowest bounces and lowest resolution, Solution, everything looks great to me. So in summary, it works flawlessly right out of the box. But if you want full creative control, you're gonna have to use the real-time compositor with it, like I did. I came up with this really cool pixel art kind of look through the compositor using the pixelate node and the box sharpen node here. And yeah, on top of that, you can add post effects like bloom and glare and lens distortion and you can color grade the whole thing here in the compositor itself. And I wish I could take you through every little detail and every little node and every small thing that it did in this project, but that would just take ages to cover. So I usually do all of that stuff on the Patreon. So if this summary of this whole project doesn't seem enough to you, I'll make a more in-depth video on my Patreon if you wanna check that out. 
But yeah, once I had this whole pixel art look ready, it was just time to have fun with it all. Like I experimented with a bunch of different kind of games. I tried making a long jump kind of game. I tried making like a GTA 5 ramps and stunt kind of thing game or just a traffic avoidance game or just a simple free roam exploration kind of game or my favorite was making this puzzle kind of game to make a maze for my viewers hide clues in it that they have to find by solving the maze through the car and once they find that code hidden in the game they can go to this link in the description and put that password in that they found in the game and maybe they can gain access to all my patreon stuff for free so if that sounds fun to you you can get that blend file for free from a link in the description the file is completely free to download but you know what i wouldn't mind if you gave me some money for it, I wouldn't mind that at all. And I think I'll do this too. I'll include a template file with just that drivable car and that script and a completely empty scene. So you could take that file and make something yourself. Maybe make like a level design yourself. If you are interested in making something like that, please check out the link in the description. Download the file, make something. And if you do, send it to me on Instagram. I would love to take a look and maybe even share it with the world. And yeah, I'm not gonna lie. It's a pretty heavy file. So if the game doesn't run smoothly on the rendered mode, switch to the material view node and it might perform a little better. The game actually gets like a whole new look in the material view node. So it's just fun to check that out for that itself. But if even that doesn't work and it doesn't perform well on your computer, you can play the game in the solid view mode itself, but it just wouldn't be super fun to look at. That's it. And yeah, here are the instructions to play the game. Make sure you select this empty within the speed controller collection and then just run this script here and the game should just start. And you should be able to control the car with your keyboard. W to move forward, S to brake, A to steer, D to steer and spacebar for handbrake. If something weird happens in the middle or your car gets stuck somewhere or it just topples off the surface of the earth, just press escape and it will bring you back to the start and you can start the game again. And yeah, this is not a full-fledged game. I hope you understand that. Hence, all these instructions. But you know what? I'm sure with a little more scripting and maybe if you actually knew how to code in Python unlike me, you could make the whole experience much, much better than what I've done here. You could make like a whole point system or like a damage system and whatnot. It could just get crazy. The potential could be infinite there. But all of this to just say, I guess maybe it's time to bring back the Blender game engine back to life. And with add-ons like OmniStep, where you can literally make like an FPS game within Blender if you want. And with all these geometry nodes features and all these simulation nodes features and all these ray tracing improvements, I feel like there is no better time to rejuvenate the game engine right now. Just throwing it out there. But yeah, this was a super fun project. Again, download the file, make something cool with it. If you do, don't forget to send it my way. Play that game if you want or just download that template file and make something cool with it. And yeah, again, there will be a deeper dive video on Patreon. If you want to go deeper into this subject, you can check that out too, if you've got some money to spare. But yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.